Greetings guest. welcome to The Patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking Lolita. I thought we understood no dates. What do you mean, no dates? They just sat down at our table. I don't want you around them. They're nasty-minded boys. <laughs> oh, you're a fine one to talk about someone else's mind. A few weeks ago, an article popped up in my newsfeed from the Wall Street Journal about a young teenage girl who started doing dance routines on Instagram during the pandemic. Her following started to grow. She started getting brand deals. She was excited. This was her way to pay for college. She was becoming what she'd always dreamed of. She was an influencer. And her mom started noticing that most of the people subscribed and interacting with her young daughter's account were grown adult men. 92% grown adult men to be exact. Here's an excerpt from the article. Men left public comments on photos of the daughter with fire and heart emojis, telling her how gorgeous she was. Those were the tamer ones. Some men sent direct messages proclaiming their obsession with the girl. This text is from a recent Wall Street Journal article titled, The Influencer is a Young Teenage Girl, The Audience is 92% Adult Men. So the mom in the article is torn, doesn't want to isolate the rapidly growing male audience because this is lucrative for her daughter, but she also doesn't want her daughter being exploited. I'll leave a link to the article down below so you can read what happens. But after reading that, I thought it's finally time to talk about Lolita. I have received this request a few times and thank you to my supporters who have commented and asked me to look into this story after I started the questionable casting series back in February. I had personally never seen this film nor read the book until it was mentioned. And after having watched both the 1962 film directed by Stanley Kubrick and the 1997 adaptation starring Dominic Swain and directed by Adrian Lin, I'm ready to talk about it. The story of Lolita positions itself as many things. It could be a cautionary tale for single mothers. It could also be the age-old tale of men who wish to exploit and control young girls. But it could also be viewed as a story of a girl, a young girl with a crush on an older man, turned sour. In my opinion, all of these things are true, and now we have an outline for the video. But before we break down those three points, let's talk about the author of the original story. Lolita was written by Vladimir Nabokov in 1955, and he actually intended to publish this book under a fictitious name. This indicates to me that he knew that this was likely not to be received well. He knew that the story of a man marrying a widower to access her 12-year-old daughter, then wishing, I mean literally speaking, her mom's death into existence so he could then have the girl to himself and sexually exploit her, he knew that would raise some eyebrows, and it did. The editor of the London Sunday Express said, quote, this is the filthiest book I've ever read. It's been cited that the book was banned for two years by France's Minister of Interior. Yet when the book finally found itself published in the States, it took off, sold 100,000 copies in just the first three weeks. It's also worth noting as I was digging into Mr. Nabokov's catalog of work that in 1939, he wrote a book titled The Enchanter. It's an eerily similar story about a middle-aged man lusting after an adolescent girl that he met in a park. The man also marries the mom to access the daughter. The mom passes away, then the girl is his. The difference between the two stories is that the male protagonist and the enchanter has an ongoing internal conflict about his obsession with his teenage stepdaughter. This is not true for Humbert Humbert. Also, the girl in the enchanter is terrified of the man when he tries to establish an intimate relationship with her. She doesn't curiously lean into it like Dolores would 16 years later. So on to Lolita. And before we hit on my three points, I'd like to note that Stanley Kubrick raises the age of Lolita in his 1962 adaptation to soften some of the criticism that was destined to come from making this film. 
In the book, she's a preteen. She's 12 years old. And in his movie, both adaptations, in fact, they cast teenagers who are a bit older. In Kubrick's film, Lolita presents as being a bit mature for her age. And this was very much intentional because they needed her to be seen as a sex object, not for what it actually was, which was an adult male lusting after a child. The plot is about a young teenage girl named Dolores, referred to as Lo by her mother and how she, the girl, becomes the obsession of a middle-aged man named Humbert Humbert. Humbert is a writer and a professor and ends up renting a room from widower Charlotte Hayes, who lives alone with her quarrelsome teen daughter, Lo. That's my Lo. Immediately, we see that Charlotte is very much attracted to Humbert Humbert, and as much as she is observant of her guests, she still somehow is very much blind to the obvious attraction that Mr. Humbert has towards her daughter. Charlotte eventually confesses her love to Humbert in a letter, essentially giving him an ultimatum to leave the house because she was just too head over heels for him. He takes advantage of this opportunity, marries her quickly, simply because he wants to stay in Lowe's life. When Charlotte discovers her new husband's feelings towards her daughter and how he really feels about her, she's naturally furious and soon after tragically loses her life in a freak accident. Finding out just a tad too late and leaving this world with her daughter in the hands of a predator. Charlotte was desperate and as a result got herself entangled in a relationship that unfolded way too fast. Why? She was lonely and widowed, taking care of a wayward teenage girl. She wanted love and perhaps some help. Single moms are especially vulnerable to predatory men, and Lolita does a great job of highlighting how dangerous it can be to fall blindly in love with a man without understanding his true intentions. <laughs> Humbert Humbert is portrayed as a bit of a timid intellectual with an innocent crush. But as we see his and Lowe's relationship progress, what we actually see is that Humbert is exploitative, manipulative, and controlling. Let's focus on his relationship with Lowe once he has her mom out of the picture. Both versions of the film make Humbert seem like a likable guy because he's not overly aggressive and overt when he's moving in on Lowe. In fact, particularly in the 1997 film, Adrian Lin portrays Lowe as the aggressive pursuer, but we'll get to that later. Humbert's predication and quest to be with Lowe is very subtle and covert, and it can be easy to miss the manipulation in the beginning due to Lowe's aggressive personality when juxtaposed against Humbert's very mild and meek persona. Again, we're talking about Adrian Lin's portrayal. But Humbert is a master manipulator in each story. I see this in the way he intentionally held off four days on telling Lo about her mom's passing until after their hotel stay. You look 100% better when I can't see you. Would a grieving Dolores have entered into this flirtatious and inappropriate relationship had he told her right away about her mom's passing? Let me know what you think. Then later in the film, we see the controlling behavior, not wanting her to be in the school play and interacting with boys her own age. And Lowe's mind is so twisted at this point that this teenager is now leveraging a sexually transactional relationship with her own stepfather to ward off his jealousy and control so she can simply do normal adolescent school activities like be in a play. It's actually a sad scene to watch to see her come to the point of using sexual favors to get what she wants from a man. <music> Lastly, we cannot ignore the fact that Lowe leaned into Humbert and actually led some of their inappropriate interactions. And because I haven't mentioned ages of any of the actors or actresses yet, let's note that Dominique Swain, who played Lolita in the 1997 film, was 15 years old when the movie first started filming, while Jeremy Irons, who played Humbert Humbert, was 49. 
And in the 1962 film, Sue Lyon was 14 years old, and her co-star James Mason was 53. I personally cannot equate the very initial interactions between Humbert, Humbert, and Lowe as anything more than a pesky kid who has some curiosity about the new guy living in her house. But her early affections are clearly displayed the moment she's about to leave for camp and runs upstairs to passionately kiss Humbert before departing. The question is, is it an odd thing for a young girl to have a crush on an older man? Not at all. It's a common storyline and quite common in real life. Like, who were your celebrity crushes when you were a teen? But it is odd and predatory of an older man to act on it. After all, that is a minor and it's up to the adult to clearly establish that boundary. So instead of doing that, Humbert Humbert lets it happen and eventually this relationship turns into a very abusive dynamic that Lo actually runs away from. So what are your thoughts on Lolita and why do you think this novel exploded when it got to the States? Share them down below and as always, if you've enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe for more. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.